Well, good morning. It's Tuesday morning. I trust you had a, a really good Easter weekend with your family and a time, hopefully, too, of rejoicing as we celebrated the death, uh, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, welcome to this new week as we into our third week now of lockdown. Um, and yeah, we've had to change things up a little bit just to keep it fresh and, and to make this time productive as well. And so, as Jordan shared with you yesterday, we're going to be looking at a book now, doing some, some study of a book so that it's not just... Um, yeah, in a way, some wasted time as we, we spend a few moments together each morning. Let's let's use this time to study God's Word and to, to get a better understanding of who God is and what He expects of us and what joy there is in, in um, being in relationship with Him. And so, we, as Jordan shared with you yesterday, we're going to be looking at the book of James over the next few weeks. Um, each day, just looking at different aspects of it, um, not deep, in-depth study, but really just getting to grips with what James was saying to us around living out our lives um, in day-to-day -day fashion in difficult times. And so he shared with you part of the introduction, and I want to continue with uh, some of that introduction this morning as we, we look at James. I mean, we just need to be reminded that James writes about real-life issues and how we deal with them. And so when we look at real-life issues, we need to talk about real faith. We need to not talk about some highly spiritualized, over-spiritualized faith. We need to look at a faith that is practical and relevant to the things we're going to face every day. And so when he begins the book of James um, he actually says, after he has said to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations, he says greetings. In other words, he's saying hello to them. But actually, when you break down that word into the original, it actually means rejoice, which I find quite interesting that he's writing around the difficulties we're going to have in life. He's talking about trials. He's talking about tribulation. He's talking about perseverance, um, um, building character. In our lives, he's going to be talking around our struggles with money and the love of money. He's going to talk about our favoritism. He's going to talk about growing weary in our faith, how we deal with all those things. Yet he begins the book with rejoice. And I want to say to you, I think the reason he uses the term um, rejoice is because he wants us to understand that the only way we get through difficult times, the only way we get through the real challenges of life is by rejoicing in a mature faith. We cannot have a weak, wishy-washy, very surface level kind of faith if we're going to endure the difficulties we're going to face in life. Our faith needs to mature. Our faith needs to grow in depth and it needs to grow in quality and its foundation needs to become more and more solid as we grow older in our faith. And so he uses the word rejoice to remind us, friends, Christians, you need your faith to mature. And sadly for me, when I look in the Christian church today, very um, few people really grow to a deep, mature faith. For many, it's, the faith just sort of comes, there's salvation, and then there's just this, almost a flat line as they go through their life. Uh, they never really grow. And the writer to the Hebrews says to us, it's time to leave these elementary teachings behind now. It's time to move on to deeper things. But very few actually do. And then when the time of trouble comes, we find that many, even in the church, struggle. And sadly, so many even walk away from the faith, blaming God for, for what has happened, putting all the blame on him, um, and really just, just giving up on all of it. And James begins and says, you're going to face trials and you're going to face temptations. And you need to persevere through these because persevere ultimately will build character and sadly many Christians haven't gone through that process of building character and allowing their mature the, the, the maturing of their faith uh, and that's a concern to me uh, and I think it comes from a lack of understanding of scripture um, very weak doctrine very um, poor um, devotional um, disciplines uh, and so eventually they, they find when the time of trouble comes their faith isn't real their faith is very shallow. And we need a, a real faith. We need a mature faith if we're going to face the real issues of everyday life. Fake faith does not make it in the real world. Fake faith leads us into trouble. And so I thought what we would do this morning as part of the introduction and just getting going into James is just to say, well, how, what do we look for when we're looking for a mature faith? Well, to get that right, I think we need to first start and say, well, what is mature faith not? So firstly, I think what we need to do when we look at um, somebody's faith and see, well, are they mature in their faith is number one, let's not look at how old they are. Um, I think we're caught in a world where, where age brings an automatic expectation of respect. And I'm not saying we don't respect um, age, but the problem is within the church, sometimes we make the assumption that because a person has been in the faith for long 
or they are much older than us, they must be mature in their faith. And I want to say to you, my time in the pastorate, um, I've seen many people who've been Christians for 10, 20, 30, maybe 40 or even 50 years who are not mature in their faith. They've never moved on from the elementary teachings. They, they've come to a point of saying, well, I'm saved now, and that's good enough, and they never grow. Age is not an indicator of maturity. Um, we need to grow into a childlike faith. And you'll say, but doesn't Scripture say that we need to have a childish faith? And there's a big difference between what I've just said um, and what we must understand. We cannot have a childish faith. We need to have a childlike faith. A childish faith is a faith that, that is very self-centered, self-orientated. Jesus says, come to me like a little child. And so as our faith grows, as our faith matures, we become more childlike in it because we come to the point of understanding that Jesus is the one who does everything. So the submission and the obedience comes. We come to him with a childlike faith, believing he can do all things and he is capable of being in control of all things. So we, we've got to grow into a childlike faith, not a childish faith. And sadly, many um, older Christians still have a childish faith, a faith that is very self-centered, not um, God-orientated and God-centered. So let's not just say, well, because the person is older than me, their faith is mature. Secondly, um, we need to be careful not to just look at how people look on the outside. Um, we know we can wrap up a, a, a real, really lousy Christmas present for someone and put it in a great piece of paper, and we'll think it's a great present, but it's not. Um, and so we need to be careful. Often in the church, there are these people that have all the trappings of, of great Christian faith. Um, um, they dress the way they need to. They talk the way they need to. And, and everything on the outside looks good. But inside, it, it's very, very shallow. Um, you know, it's this faith that is, say, 10 miles wide and one inch deep. And we've, we've heard about that, I'm sure. But for many, the outside it looks good. But the inside really has no depth, no foundation to their faith. And so when the time of perseverance comes, the time of struggle, the time of trial, of temptation, there's nothing there because the outside is just a facade. And so we need to be careful because the church is full of them and they meet all the trappings of what needs to be done. They attend every Bible study, they attend every church social function, they have all the prayer meetings, they have every service. But often when we really dig deep, I'm not saying everyone, but often for them, when we dig deeper, we'll find there's no real substance to their faith. So let's not look at how old people are. Let's not have a look at how what they look like on the outside. Um, and then we also need to be careful not to look at where they are in the church or even in society, what they've, they've achieved, what they've done um, over the years. Many people have done many things in the church, but they actually have no real um, roots that can dig deep. And, and John writes and says, you know, we need to be people that bear fruit and fruit that lasts. And, and I've seen so many people that, that supposedly come to salvation and then as they get involved in the life of the church, things go well and they, they're just doing all these things and, and things look so good around them and then they just die. Literally, their faith just dies. It, it's almost like a, a comet. I had this picture of a comet through the sky. It's bright and it burns hot and it goes, but slowly but surely it fades and it's gone. And there's no, we never see it again and it's done. And, and I see too many Christians that happens to them because they are unable to persevere. They're unable to go through. They're unable to rejoice in their faith because their faith hasn't yet matured. And, and it's just stayed that simple um, weak shallow faith that they've always had and so we need to be careful we, we have people in the church sadly that are elders that are deacons that are in leadership of the church but they're not mature in their faith they've been picked um looking at worldly things they're good businessmen they're good ceos they're good coos and um, they're good logistical people um they're great friends they have you know they're very popular and we elect them into positions of leadership, but their faith is not mature. They're not able to be in a position of leadership. And we need to be looking at, at 1 Timothy. We need to be looking at Titus when we pick leaders. Look at those credentials, not at the worldly credentials. And when we look at the credentials in, in Timothy and in Titus, we'll see that those are, are um, credentials often that speak around maturity in their faith. So let's not look at those. Let's look, look at old people. Let's not look at the outside. Let's look not look at what they've been achieving in the church. Let's rather be looking at the fruit that they bear. So if they're living in the Spirit, if they're being led by the Spirit and they're in step with the Spirit, then we will see that the fruit they're bearing is in step with what the Spirit wants, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control, and so forth. And that's what we need to be looking for in maturity of people that are, are growing. Um, this, this fruit that lasts, fruit that has an ability to endure through the times of drought, through the times of storm, through the times of flood, of cold and heat. It's um, faith that can endure those things. That's what we need to be looking for in people. And we'll find that 
often the people who've gone through the hardest and most difficult times, and, and our testimony from my wife and I would bear fruit to or bear witness to that, that when we go through those difficult times, we come through stronger when we allow our faith to be molded and our faith to be to be strengthened. So we need to be looking at what is the attitude in a way of the people we're dealing with. Are they godly attitudes or are they worldly attitudes? What fruit are they bearing for the kingdom? And I think that is a key indicator for us. So maybe... Uh, um, as an exercise for us, we, we need to be looking at ourselves and saying, well, what fruit am I bearing even this morning? Am I able to stand with James and say, no matter what trial, no matter what temptation, no matter what difficulty I'm facing right now, I can rejoice. Um, I shared with you on Sunday morning in a um, Resurrection Sunday sermon that David said, praise the Lord, O my soul, all of my inmost being will praise him. Are we able this morning to say, I will praise him even in the difficulties, even in this time of lockdown? Will we, will I, am I able to praise him? Am I able to rejoice um, in these difficult times? And so let's really be looking as we go into the book of James. This book is written to you and, and to me. It's written to us as people living in a, in a difficult world, in difficult times, and saying to us, how is your faith maturing through this? A mature faith will see us through, us, through this. A mature faith will see you through this time with rejoicing. But a, a weak, immature faith is going to be difficult to see the end of this this lockdown and the end of this disease that we're facing. And and, and it's going to be difficult to see the end of all the trials um, you're going to have in life, in work, at school, um, in your marriage, in your business, wherever. It's going to be very difficult to see it through with an immature faith. We need to build daily, moment by moment, on our faith, drawing closer to God, drawing deeper into the Holy Spirit so that our faith will become something that is rock solid, that no matter what comes against us, wind or wave, we will stand firm and we will see it through. And so... Enjoy your day. I'm trusting that you'll spend some time um, evaluating your faith this morning. Maybe there's some homework that you need to do. There's always homework for us to do. And so blessings for today. Enjoy whatever you have to do. Do it to the glory of God. And as we would always say, blessings to you and stay safe.